from the simplest to the rarest of materials. From the barks and fibers of plants to the densest of hardwood. From paper and clay and precious metals to that most wondrous substance, a mind in flight, expressing itself in a torrent of words. These are the materials from which our traditional artisans and craftsmen have built solid and grounded traditions. Fragments of a nation waiting to be made whole. By men and women who bring an entire culture and knowledge system into their creations. These are the chosen materials of indigenous craftsmen. They who are the embodiment of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. All throughout the third season of Dayao, we've admired the materiales fuertes, stone, silk, abaca, clay, wood, cotton, gold, even ivory. We've peeked into the minds and the personalities of traditional artisans. We know their patience, their skill, their strength. On this last episode of season three, we celebrate the most inspiring of materials from which we have sought to build a nation. Nothing simpler, more powerful, more moving and inspiring than words. Dayao strips throughout the Philippines have allowed us to interact, listen to, and record many traditional chanters and singers. While it will take scholarship and traditional knowledge to translate faithfully the many chants we have recorded, it is possible to glimpse in these torrents of words traces of a people's character. In the sonorous and elegant singing of a Maranao Honor, or professional chanter and entertainer, we glimpse the refined manner of the Maranao. As well as a lifestyle that revolved around royal patronage in a courtly life. Ay langan kasi ng honor para yung sabi natin pag may mga occasion yung yung mga yung mga mayaman sa atin pinapakanta sila yung honor. Yung kanta ko, yung kanina, baga yung mag-asawa kasi nagkalabingan sila, nagkasundo sila, nagkahiwalay sila kasi may isang salita na hindi nila nagkasunduan. Kaya sabi naman yung babae, kung baga sa alis ka kasi na iwanin mo ako, pag kung baga nabalikan mo ako, hindi mo na ako mababalikan kasi iniwan mo ako na walang dahilan. Pwede sa wedding or kung baga na may naghiwalay na gusto sila magbalikan, ayun, pwede na kanta. Kuray nga dan no, kuriban! Daya di marabotet, daya tayo katamang-tama. In this verbal joust recorded, among the tinggyan, we sense a communal humor and they love for salty humor. Good-natured jesting and quick wit. Kalakan aduh hukum angat memata 
ilak des kulun menyemorn kemah anem dun angat mama tay temimbul monyo udelen mal uidu mon anyo mon kemah anem dun ini nungol ilingon nukui an moyo uyu be benbu lena uye dek dek kon lekoduk monyo in Rosie Sula's chanting of the Tiboli epic Tudbulul, we come to understand the need for physical energy, for mental agility, and for sheer vocal power that allows traditional chanters to go on chanting, sometimes for days on end. So if you are not gifted, you cannot sing Tudbulul. Many chanters here in Lake Cebu, marami, kahit mga matatanda na, May mga chanter din tayo. Ngunit, hindi nila ma-differentiate yung mga kinds of voices. Hindi nila ma-ano yung tubulot. I am very happy to work at the NCIP because they consider me when I went abroad to other countries to promote the Tivoli culture to represent the Philippines. Just uh, last August, I went to Milan, Italy to sing there, invited by government of Milan, then through the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, NCCA. I sang there because based on the research of Mr. Yuval Avital that the highest tonal range of voice is the Bali tribe. So because when we sing, we start from the highest note down. So yung una, uh, introduction, ang sinasabi doon, everyone is welcome to Gunohofo and you, Visitor God, will bless you. So it's a privilege you come to my place. You see my my small house, Gono Udi. So Gono Udi, where I used to rest when I am in the field and do planting the different kinds and varieties of palai which my mother and my parents gave me and then all the indigenous crops and then welcome to Gono Hafo, the long-legged house where the old folk used to stay when there was critical time, critical situation before. And then the Lawig Tonok where our old folk stay when there is typhoon and earthquakes. Uh. Then the Angat there, it narrates that where to watch Maya birds. Words becoming chant, chant becoming ritual, ritual becoming a means to communicate with the ancestors, communication with the spirits revealing a means to heal. In this first ever footage of an Ifugao healing ritual, words become a means by which an anti-belief system is put to use for the healing of a sick community member. The rituals were conducted by a Mumbagol, a shaman considered higher and more powerful than a Mumbaki. The Mumbagol has a deeper knowledge of rituals and a vast store of prayers and chants for healing and agriculture rituals. The healing rites were for a community member who had undergone a severe and long-lasting bout of what we may call mental illness. For the Mumbagol and for the community, the soul or spirit of the afflicted had been lost and needed to be retrieved. There are other forms of healing rituals that do not have to call all the deities, the group of deities. See, the, all this group of deities are specialized on certain sickness, healing certain sickness. The term for uh, the highest uh, form of Baki is Kohag, so that's the ritual. So the priest who will perform that is called Mangohag. So the priest that perform certain ritual is named after the ritual, like the one that we just perform. Uh, the one that we just perform is uh, opah and pahang. 
So the name of the one who performed the opah is called mga opah. And the one who performed the uh, uh, pahang is called mamahang. Or mun opah rather, not, not mga opah, mun opah. Yeah, it's the name of the mumbaki who performed the opah. And uh, the pahang, mun pahang. It's the name of the uh, Mumbaki who perform it. Also, there are rules. Let's say a certain Mumbaki is reached the highest level, Manghag. But if the host perform an Ohag and he's related to one that is lower in rank, he may use the one lower because he's, he's related to perform certain uh, uh, functions. So it, it's the host that assign the Mumbaki parts. So even if you have the highest, uh, if, if you know the highest form, you can perform a lower uh, role if that is what the host assign you to do. We really need more Mumbaki. It's imperative. I get This ritual lasted a whole day and night, and Dayao is able to show only a small part of it. But through such documentation, we are able to preserve rituals and chant for future study, studies that may further illuminate how words and ideas and chant can take us beyond current reality into the realm of the healing spirits. In the tradition of the poetic Jaws, we find a very different kind of debate. Elegant, civil, clever, couched in beautiful language, bordered by old-fashioned rules. The Philippines is so rich in the tradition of poetic Jaws. Once they were mainstream forms of entertainment and discourse. Today, these exercises in spontaneous wit and quick thinking are fast disappearing. From the Ilocos region, the Dalot is one example of oral literature that is sung to commemorate important events. It can be performed as poetic joust between a man and woman. Daldalot dumi dinalang at in this recording, the Dalot is sung to mark the marriage agreement of two families. Ang Dalot ay isang uh, uri ng sinao ng oral uh, literature o oral tradition ng mga Ilocano. Ito ay ginagawa sa uh, halos uh, lahat ng mga okasyon ng mga Ilocano. Pamamanhikan, saka sa kasal, pagkatapos ng kasal. The Awitan of Tayabas Quezon is considered an extension of the Holy Week Passion as it is sung to commemorate religious feasts. Lilibot kami ng isang bahay at lilipat naman sa isang bahay. Panawagan, pagpupuri, pagyaring tanda, dasal, tapos ay pasasalamat at saka pamamaalam. 
Iyon ang kabuoan. Biyang akong hinigugma, magpakasal na kita. Kasal? Kay Nano, katrato ta ikaw? Ay, si Ibiyang ay nagagpagpakipot. Bisan diin nga simbahan, pakakaslan ta ikaw. Adoy, ang pagliwan lang nga ni San Sarwal, di rin mo nahihimo. Ang magpakasal pa da sa akon? Bisan ka pa, Guryo, magpahalas. Halas, maguro, alingbot si Topical and humorous in nature is the smiling of Sama. Puryo maruyag ka, banga kun makonswelo. Nastima daw ibyang pagpanima, tima si akuma, sa kasunod nga si mana. Actually, smiling, based on the research, is a courtship dance in poetic lines and in the form of a song. So, it started with Balitao. Uh, Balitao is an impromptu joust in poetic lies also. Actually, um, the, the purpose of the Balitao is for fun. So, there will be two performers or contenders. Then, the performance will revolve around the, the contender's shortcomings. Kaya yung iba magtatanong, Balitao? Or, really? So, kaya tina tinawag, it's called Balitao. So then, naging balak. So next to bali balak, parang extraction. Balak is an extraction from the balitao. Balak is a right term, which means your intention, your balak. It's a Filipino term actually, Tagalog. So it's a poetic joust also. Then, uh, in 1800, it revolves during the Spanish period, tinawag na amoral or amoration from the word Amor, which means love. And during the time of the Americans, um, binago na naman yung pangalan. So from bala to amoral or amoration, then to smiling from the word smile. Kasi nga, it's for fun. So nakatawa, takangisi lahat yung tao. You love the person, show your love through poem. Through, and singing, hindi lang hindi siya poetic lines. It's singing. On this part, so mahirap, napakahirap, pero ang maganda. Siyempre, kung ikaw yung babae, in the end actually, in the end, pag nagkakaroon ng partnership, in the end, nagiging sila at maraming kinakasal. Kasi may impress yung girl doon sa lahat. Nagiging sila. May history, may record, talagang yung nag, nag, nagtatambal lagi, nagiging sila, in the end. Magalat po sa ibuti, Connect po sa ngayon, sa ngayon niya kapataan po. Dapat naman po talaga yung mga babae sa tradisyon po natin bilang Pilipina, hindi po tayo sabi na natin easy to get, di ba? Kasi marami po talaga ngayon na parang nagkakamali sa pagpipili. Kasi konting kibot lang ng lalaki na nakukuha agad. So, dapat siguro bilang isang Pilipina. Ma-preserve yung pagka-Pilipina. Oo. Sa party naman sa amin, siguro mas, mas maganda yung sinaunang panahon yung pagkoportship. Kaysa sa ngayon, parang tinitext na lang 
magkikita tayo. Kumbaga nasusukat, na yun, opo. nasusukat mo talaga. Yung dati, yung pagkukot sa babae, pahirapan. Dati nagsisibak, nag-iigib ng tubig, namamanhikan. Eh sa ngayon, eh, nawawala na yun eh. Parang isang text na lang, andyan na agad. Madali lang maano sa Facebook, madali lang makita sa YouTube. Parang sa isang saglit lang mag eyeball agad. Ayun, ganun na. Parang nawawala yung tradisyon natin. Yung sa Kalbayog, parang pinipreserve na sana yung mga taga-Kalbayog nun. May yung mga babae may pakimi din. At saka yung mga sa mga lalaki naman, dapat pursigido kung talagang mahal mo yung minamahal mo. Di awitan. Dal dalo. Dalo. And is smiling. Are only three examples of oral literature that Filipinos from all over the archipelago have performed. Each one captures a distinct facet of the Pinoy psyche, from the deeply religious to the charming and humorous to even the nonsensical. With these torrents of words and music, we Filipinos have been able to strengthen our spirituality, our relationships with others. With words, we have been able to laugh at ourselves, to love, to cope, to express fully and joyfully, above all, artistically. Perhaps chants, epics, poetic jousts are still so deeply ingrained in our genetic memory that young Filipinos have taken so well to contemporary forms like rap and lately spoken word. Listen as young spoken word artists perform with a passion and conviction our ancestors would have identified with. Baka ang aking tula ay hugot ang ginagawa. At sa lamang ay nakaranas ng ganito, katinding sakit pa itluha. At lahat ng pinagdadaanan ninyo, lahat yan, walang sinabi sa sakit pa itluha. I don't think there are formal rules na we can apply or should apply sa performance poetry or sa spoken word. Na unlike yung mga formal rules ng poetic jaws na may, na may meter, may format din yung bagsakan ng dalawang um, contenders or dalawang performers, dalawang nagbabalagtas, for example. Um, yeah, walang formal rules. Nang minsan ginapon ako ng sipag, napansin ko kung gaano nakalawak ang nasasakupan ng mga agyo sa aking kwarto. Doyan silang nakalundo sa bawat sulok at doon nakahimlay ang mga hungkag na bangkay ng mga nabitag na insekto. Kailan ko nga ba huling binigkas ang iyong pangalan? Di ko natanda. Marahil isa sa maraming gabing nang kitang nakahiga sa aking kama. Nakatalikod ka. Ipinubulong ko sa iyo ang kay Timias mong pangalan. Bubulungan ko ng mga matataintim na lihim at mainit na pagsinta ang iyong Valenzuela. <laughs> Habang pinipintahan ng mga halik ang parehong Quezon City mo at Manila. Naway madama mo ang pagkumpas ng aking dibdib sa Navotas at Malabon. Na humahampas na nagbabahang mga alon ng pagnanasa. Sisisit ako at aahon sa mga ilog at sapa ng Pasig at Marikina. Personal rules ka about it sa performance poetry or spoken word. Dapat it shouldn't be afraid to be honest. And not afraid to be original. Naniniwala akong kabig-kabig honey ang mundo. At ang tulad, tulad ng tinapay ay para sa lahat. Hindi nagtatapos ang mga ugat ko sa aking kundi nakarugtong sa dugo ng mga naghihiko sa buhay. Lahat tayo is that. Lumalangoy hanggang sa dulo, lahat tayo dalampasigan ang simula na sumasalubong sa nilalangoy na dulo. Uh, 
I often hear modern Filipinos mourning the death or lack of awareness about traditional art forms and artisans. Yes, there should really be a concern and concerted effort to save and document what we can while it is still there for the saving. But I also would like to think that our genetic memory allows us to recognize and connect with traditional art forms even when these are reinterpreted and updated for our own times. Our love for harmonious beauty, for skill, for values made real and tangible through art. These are our connections, our links to tradition. And to the Filipinos who made and continue to make tradition live on. In the end, we are our own best materiales fuertes. Truly, by any other word, in any other age, Dayao is always our knowledge, our pride.